Doug Caldwell, Collier County Extension, Commercial Landscape Horticulture. And we're out here looking at uh, the turf. We have an outbreak of tropical sod webworm in Naples, Florida. And we're looking at how do we sort out what is going on here. Is it chinch bug, grubs, tropical sod webworm, is it disease? Why is the grass being affected? So we're going to look at some clues to help you cue in on what to do, what treatments you'll need. So follow me along and we'll show you what to do. What we have here is a major difference in height. This grass is a normal height and this area it looks like it's been mowed down or like somebody has taken a weed eater to the area. And that's typical of what you'll see with tropical sod webworm. So what we're going to do is look a little bit closer into the thatch area, maybe even use a soap drench to see what we can get to, to pop out of the thatch, and then we can decide what to use to treat it, whether it's sod webworm or chinch bugs. All right, so we want to diagnose what's happening with our grass. It's disappearing. It looks thin. So here's where we got to get our knees dirty, get down, take a closer look, look at the grass blades, look for chewing, uneven edges along the grass blades, holes in the grass blades, and worse comes to worse, your verdure is missing. Those little guys are chewing the grass blades all the way down to the stolons. So take a closer look and see if you can see the caterpillars and the grasses. Okay, we are alive with tropical sod webworm here. Moths are hovering about depositing eggs. These eggs will hatch in about two weeks and the caterpillars will start chewing the grass. It's not the moths that are doing the damage themselves, it's the eggs are laying that hatch into the caterpillars that do the chewing. And we have a very high population here. One way to find out if you have tropical sod webworm is a good old soap drench. This is where we give them a little bath and the soap irritates them and makes them crawl out of the thatch area where we, they're very hard to find. So we have to flush them out. And what we do is a uh, liquid detergent, in this case, uh, Dawn odor eraser. I don't know how important that is, but uh, you're looking at two tablespoons per two gallons. So it's one tablespoon per gallon. And then we're gonna pour it over approximately a three foot by three foot area. All right, the soap flush goes down on about a three foot by three foot area. And what we'll do is scare these little tropical sod webworm caterpillars out. If they're there, they'll come screaming out. All right, we've done the soap flush and we're looking for little caterpillars. I see a click beetle, a few other things. Uh, as we look here, you'll see little green pellets of frass which is an, a polite term for insect excrement. You see little pellets where the caterpillars have been. Okay, now we're going to recap on the biology of the tropical sod webworm. Here's a shot showing the caterpillar, the damaging stage, the guy that chews up your grass, and its color will vary depending on how much of your grass it has inside its intestines. If it's been eating, it's full, full of chlorophyll, your chlorophyll, uh, they're easier to see. So they're sort of a gray green color with black brown spots on each segment of the body. And if you look around it, there's frass, which is an indication it's been busy chewing on your grass. And here's a close up of the adult moth. The moth does not do damage, but deposits eggs, which are going to the caterpillars that do the damage. These moths are about a half inch, three quarters inch wingspan if they're spread out and a nondescript gray-brown, tannish color. And here's another clue. If you've got a lot of uniform-sized moths attracted to your lights at night, most likely you might have tropical sod webworm. And here's a nice shot showing what they look like in a patio area that was lit up all night long, drawing those little guys in. All right, so we've decided we've got the tropical sod webworm. What are we going to do about it? One thing you need to address is your cultural practices, which means looking at your fertilizer rates, how much is being applied. Too much soluble nitrogen can lead to too many caterpillars. The adult moths are attracted to your lush green carpet, and that's where they put their eggs. 
The other consideration is, are you applying pesticides willy-nilly without any pests being present? If you're applying pesticides, you're also suppressing the good bugs, what I call the attack bugs, that help keep the bad bugs at bay and in check. So if you're applying pesticides too often, you may also induce a caterpillar outbreak. So we've determined we've got too many caterpillars. What do we do about it now? There's several approaches. One is to use a broad spectrum insecticide that nukes the good bugs along with the bad bugs. Some broad spectrum insecticides you may choose are seven, otherwise known as carborel, bifenthrin, also known as tall star, and some of the newer pyrethroids, which include cyhalothrin and cyfluthrin. The second approach with chemical pesticides is to use a biorational, and this means it's got a narrow spectrum. In other words, there's a product called spinosad, which is good for caterpillars, and it doesn't take out the good bugs. So it, it's only going to take out the bad bugs that are affecting your crop, in other words, your turf. Mm -hmm.